All right. Well, I'm here with Emma Brown Garrett. I'm so excited to see you. It's been, as we we're just discussing, uh, some years since we've caught up. But last time was an in rooms options at, at Di Jones before you moved on from there. And you had such an amazing uh, career trajectory and growth and journey since then. And I watched uh, Kylie's last Imp Impact Influence with you, and that was really cool. I, I really took a bit out of that. And I think one of the things in terms of the next step of progression today, I wanted to really attack Emma was. Um, you're obviously working with lots and lots of salespeople and yeah. I'm kind of on a journey to ask some questions around relevance of auctions and on a bit of a journey to ask, you know, the actual, the excellent auction practitioners, what is it about them that they do that differs from the not so excellent practitioners? So hence the sort of call today and I just want to ask you those sorts of questions, you know, what makes a great auction agent? It, that is such a great question, Darren, because uh, one thing that we do at Mink White um, is that we do have a training element um, in our business. And so any of our clients, any of the agents we work with can access that at any time. One of the things that I found, and I always say this, that I was in sales previously before being an auctioneer. What I have learned as an auctioneer, if I could go back and implement that into my sales career, I would have been a better sales agent. I, I, it actually, it really kind of kills me a little bit, to be honest with you. I wish that I'd had all my auction training before I'd started to become a sales agent. One of the things that I've noticed with the clients that we work with is that if you follow the auction formula from the very first sign of agency, any conversations that you have with your clients, any, any information that's transferred back and forth, you just have to stick to your guide. If you want to have a very successful auction campaign, the only numbers that you are giving out, the only conversations that you're having with people are around, this is the auction guide. If you have that or better on the day, show up. And I think a lot of agents get caught into, you know, language and dialogue around, well, you know, the owner's looking for, they may accept um, and, you know, as soon as there's lots of numbers and different numbers that get thrown around, if you just stick to that simple process of, of really sticking to that guide and encouraging people to make it to the auction, I think um, successful auctions are built that way. I mean, I didn't really know this as a sales agent. I mean, I feel like, as I said before, my God, if I could take that knowledge. But it is a process. And if you follow it from the very beginning and, you, and, it, and it flows all the way through, a successful auction day is the outcome of a successful campaign in the language that's used throughout yeah very good and so to that end what so if i've heard you what, what you're saying is absolutely sticking to your guns from your from your price yes. indicator yeah. um any other core traits any other core traits that that make you know if you discern between your, your client base and think those three or four are the best you know auction processing you know people and and those two or three are the least best in in your mix of clients Absolutely. you know what's what's the variance what's the think, what are the um, traits or the skills that I always talk a lot to my clients about um you know always run it don't pull your auctions on a Friday night you know it, it is a process and you're either selling prior you're selling on the day or you're selling afterwards in an auction campaign and uh you know you never know who shows up on auction day and so a lot of the clients we work with um most of our clients absolutely love the auction process and so they do run it through regardless of uh, you know one bitter auctions that we've seen in the last six to 12 months and you know no matter how many people you're expecting on the day whether it's none or more you really are sticking to your guns with that and saying i'm following through i'm, I'm running the auction no matter what um and you know i think i think a lot of agents that we work with they're not afraid to to do that i think you know it's it's a scary thing as a sales agent that you get to Thursday afternoon, your best buyer's already bought something or your somebody's pulled out. It's very nerve wracking for an agent on the day to put that forward to the market when there's no buyers. And so I think um, sticking to it and running through the process is, is um, it's a gutsy thing, right? 100%. There's a, there's a, there's a big growth in, I'm based in Brisbane on the Bay side. There's been quite a big growth in Queensland over the last sort of 24 months in terms of the volume of stock that comes to the market and the yes. percentage of that which is auction. I understand that culturally Sydney, Melbourne, quite deeply intrinsically uh, linked to, you know, if you're going to the market in certain suburbs, you wouldn't not go to auction, right? Yes. That's kind of deep in the culture there. But are there parts of the market that you work across that 
um, auctions not such necessarily the, the first preference or, you know, what, like, how do you work with those agents? What what, what advice might you have or, or why do you think they work that way? Why do there you think are, they preclude auction? Yeah, there are some businesses that we worked with that are a sole prior business and, and we know that. Obviously, they do um, advertise, uh, you know, properties for auction, but most of the time things are sold prior. Um, and I think that's a question too that you ask yourself as a sales agent. You know, are you an auction agent on the day or are you a sole prior business as well? And how you approach each auction campaign is different with that dialogue too, if you'd like to have it sold prior. Um, I, I definitely think that um, within those businesses, you know, it, it is just about the language that you're using and, and how you're, the dialogue that you're having with those buyers throughout the campaign. But there are definitely markets within Sydney that we see um, where auction auction campaigns work, they go ahead straight away. But then some of the other businesses, they really do like to, um, to just go with private treaty. But every time you're doing that and you're putting a property up for private treaty, there, you are you are really surrendering to, you know, there's no sense of urgency. You know, you, do you want people to come through that property straight away? I mean, there's risks that you take with a private treaty campaign, but some of, some of the markets that we work in, um, mostly the markets we work in are auction. Most of our clients that we work with are auction-based, obviously, and they truly believe in the auction process. Yeah, yeah. What do you reckon that is that, that drives that belief for them? That's a really good question. It's funny, I think when you work as a sales agent, the type of office environment and structure that you're brought up in can mm. really lead you into having that love for an auction campaign. Mm. Um, a lot of people uh, may not have worked in offices where it, it's it's a must. I, mean, I, think, I think, you know, the belief in the process and everything like that. Um, definitely, if you've had the training behind why a successful auction campaign works, I think also some businesses where they have an in-house auctioneer um, that sometimes doubles as a sales manager. We talked just recently about um, Josh Larson at Die Jones, who is an excellent sales manager at the same time as being their head auctioneer. And so he's there really encouraging and breeding that environment that auctions work and that we push everything to auction. Um, so I, I definitely think how you've, how you've trained, what offices you've worked in, who you've worked with, and if you've had some successful auctions along the way and you know how they work, you're more likely to jump ahead and put most things to auction. Yeah, it's a really great comment, that environment and structure, right? Like if, you, if you're in a surrounding environment where this is what we do around here and this is our culture, then yeah. even if I'm diametrically opposed to that, at least I'd probably be willing to listen and, and have a look, you know. And try, it, it, try hard and see to, if it yeah. Hard not to. Yeah, any advice for anyone thinking about, um, you know, I, I'm in my first year or two of real estate. I've, I've moved through the motions of, say, having been an associate with a with a high-performing agent. That high-performing agent isn't necessarily an auction agent, so I've come through that school. But I've gone out on my own. I'm sort of five or eight sales deep, and I'm really thinking about having a bit of a crack. What, you know, what would be some of the advice you'd give to me to consider really pushing forward into, you know, developing my auction practice? You... If you work at an agency where you have an in-house auctioneer, I would definitely um, block some time in with them for some training um, and even just some dialogue because there's so many. I mean, we talk about this a lot within our business. What we do as auctioneers is we develop our language and, you know, we have that correct language around, you know, what to say and how to say it to people. And I think if you if you really want to develop a great auction campaign, spend some time with your auctioneer. If you don't have an auctioneer in house, and there's somebody that you um, that shines for you, that you might be set, you might follow someone on Instagram, or you might be thinking about maybe changing auctioneers, don't hesitate to branch out and and say, look, you know, could we grab a coffee? Could we have just thirty minutes, a half an hour together, just to I don't know, maybe lock in some systems that you can use so that your auction process is better. We're very approachable. I absolutely love it when clients ring me and say, Ems, I've got this auction campaign coming up. I'm not sure how I'm going to approach it. What's your advice? And and I love that. I mean, we eat, sleep, breathe auctions. This is what we do. I, I waited my whole life for this job. I'm like, come on, <laughs> let me let me give you some let me give you some um, wisdom. Let me impart my wisdom on you. But definitely, don't ever hesitate to approach an auctioneer and say, look. What can I try differently? What's something that I can do? And even with that, 
you know, um, we talk about negotiations on the auction floor and how we are together when we work together as a team on auction day. Don't ever be afraid to pull your auctioneer aside and say, what do we do here? You know, if you are a little bit unsure and you want to have a little bit more training around that, don't ever be afraid to do that because that's what we do. That's really cool. I mean, what you're talking about there is is certainly that relationship between agent and auctioneer. And I think, I know for me anyway, as an auction practitioner, 40 or 50 auctions campaigns in the last 12 or 18 months, you know, I rely on my auctioneer as this kind of uh, really important tool that when you see someone shift such money and get it right, like the difference between getting it wrong and getting it right is so minuscule, but yeah. when they get it right, like, I mean, the, the difference is is breathtaking. I'm a convert. I guess my question is for the non-converts, um, <laughs> you know, in terms of that working relationship with your agents, there are some agents I'd imagine that are really needy and there are some that just want you to show up and count some numbers and this get out of their way. Um, there's there's probably a great one. mix of, of people. But you know what? What advice would you have for you know if I'm a if I'm a client and or considering using you guys? You know how how would I how would I get best use out of you? How, like you know yeah, what, in terms of your sure. value proposition, how do I really use you best for my practice? And you're absolutely right. There are a lot of clients that we work with that love using us on auction day, and there's a lot of also, there's a lot of other clients that we have that really do just like us to show up at, and do what we do. Um, I think we. You need, you look at us like a bit of a tool, and I always talk to my clients about this, that we are trained readers in body language, um, our negotiation skills from our sales background, especially the team at Meg White, where we are all real estate people. It's 20 years coming up for me now in real estate, and the rest of our team, Clarence White, Paul Mink, Paul Crawford, we all have that real estate experience. So when it comes to the auction day, don't hesitate to jump in and say, look, I need a bit of a help with negotiation or, or coming back to those one bidder auctions. What do we do at a one bidder auction? Yeah. You know, or what do we do when there's no bidders? And I think, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of different ways to navigate that and um, using us as a bit of a tool there for reading body language, who's, who's left in the room, who's still bidding, who's not bidding. Um, can we be asking for increased bids when we're below our reserves? You know, for an example, you're under your reserve. The last bid that was put in was a $25,000, $30,000 bid. There's still more money in that buyer. Nobody's coming back with their last bid at $25,000, $30,000, dollars $50,000. So there's different ways of reading the auction floor. And because we do that day in, day out, you know, six, seven, eight, nine on a Saturday, where we see these patterns of behaviour. And so, yeah, I always say to people, you know, what do you want from us? How, how can we help you move this across the line, you know? Awesome. Well, I really look forward to hanging out one Saturday and checking out uh, a bit of a, a roll around <laughs> Sydney and uh, seeing you crack the gavel out. And um, it's been terrific to reconnect. Uh, any last words that you might have in mind for maybe even um, a really significant performer with their EBU, with their team, that's kind of, you know, they've been using the same auctioneer for the last 15 years just because, you know, yes. any sort of considerations or words for them to 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 just have a little stop, pause and think? Anything that, any this seeds for them? This is great. I, this is um, one of the things for me, I'm early in my auction career. Um, I've been at Meg White now for about two and a half years full time. And, you know, before that, you know, kind of bits and pieces of doing auctions. Um, one of the things that we always talk about is, what's our point of difference and why are we different as a team and what do we do that's different? I think what agents really need to concentrate on is the fact that your auctioneer is representing your brand. Mm. So when your auctioneer is up there and you've got your prospective vendors in the room, neighbours, buyers, what are they seeing? What are they seeing? They're seeing you, the auctioneer, as an extension of that brand. How do you want your brand represented on auction day? And it's a big day. You, you're, you're exposure to a lot of people on that day. We tend to talk a lot about, um, you know, gone are the days of the old cliche language. Um, you know, we're very, we're very new in our language and different. We're very articulate. I think buyers now want to be able to connect with the auctioneer at some point. They want to feel like they've got some time if they need to make a decision. I mean, I 
I'm very um, considerate with that. I'm very empathetic with my buyers and I can give you some time if you need it. And I think you want to be able to be approachable. But definitely when it comes down to, you know, are you getting the best from your auctioneer that you currently have? And listen, loyalty trumps a lot, right? I mean, you know, I, I struggle in, in my business with prospecting to, to get new clients sometimes because I understand that you've had an auctioneer for 20, 30 years and the loyalty is there. But there is something to be said for your auctioneer representing your brand. And mm. you want to be able to have that person up there, sharp, sleek, the right language, the right dialogue, you know, being able to help you with negotiations if you need it. And, and you know, what's what does that say about your brand? So, yeah, I always talk about that, that think about are you getting are you getting the best of, of what you get from your auctioneer? And if not, then maybe it's time to make a change. Awesome, EVG. Great to see you. You're looking amazing in your vintage down there in Dalesford for the no, weekend. Well, I'm here in my little um, holiday house in Dalesford, um, and I thought, you know, I'm on the vintage couch, so I thought I'd do a little bit of vintage here. <laughs> yeah, looking great. Really so nice, lovely to connect, and I'm so thankful for you sharing with uh, the viewers and myself. I picked up a couple little great kernels there that you've just reminded me. I think the key one that I just took really in the middle of what you were talking about there was the impact of environment and structure around you on the trajectory of your option business. You know, if you're in an environment that you, as you mentioned, if you're in an environment surrounded by that as a culture, then, you know, really? you're on your way. I, but didn't, if- I didn't really fall in love with the auction process until I worked at Di Jones with Josh every day and, you know, having those conversations around auctions all the time. And so, you know, if I hadn't been in that environment, would I have fallen in love with the process as much? I don't think so. The impact of leadership on culture, hey? Absolutely. Makes a huge difference. Hey, have a great day. Lovely to see you, and I look forward to seeing you around. Thanks so much.